Hey guys, it's Jason here and welcome to another video. So guys, for this video, we are going to be working on the Super Rock Ray. Um, you know, there's kind of a cool story right now with this thing. Um, I had a friend who was really, really interested in it. And um, after he saw it, he really, really wanted it. And I was kind of tempted to sell it. Um, only because, because I didn't want to sell it. I'd kind of said, you know, like, honestly, if I'm going to sell this thing, I'm going to sell it for close to, you know, kind of what I have into it. You know, knock a few hundred off, but nothing crazy. And he was genuinely still interested in it. Um, obviously, the truck is in awesome shape. I haven't ran it that much. Um, it's got, you know, the mod parts already installed. So for him, it was just easier to get a truck that had everything done to it. Um, so we had kind of talked about a price and we didn't finalize anything. And, you know, it's it's always tempting to get when, you know, when you can just basically get money. And in this case, I was getting a good chunk of my truck back. Um, of the money that I had invested in this truck back, but came down one night and I just looked at it and thought, you know, this thing is just one of those trucks that is so much fun to drive that, you know, even though I have other trucks, even though I have other cool trucks that probably handle better and all that kind of stuff, this thing is just fun to drive. It's kind of, you know, you know, it's sort of like, you know, if you have the super ultra modern sports car, and then you drive, you know, a classic or even just something with no stability control and all that kind of stuff. You know, you just, it's more fun. And I mean, I don't have any type of AVC or any of that kind of system in this. I run uh, the truck with my Futaba 7PX. So it's just raw and fun to drive. Anyways, guys, we are going to be installing these parts tonight. They are the rear trailing arms and the front knuckles. Um, I've had these parts, guys, since, um, almost since I got the truck. And I did the T-bone racing parts first. I have done back here, this rear mount. Um, and these have just literally been sitting over there. And I've just, you know, when I started thinking about trading and selling this, you know, I was kind of saying, hey, I've got some new and packaged parts too um, that I was, you know, obviously going to include. But since I have decided to keep it, I just, you know, honestly, I think now you could pretty much offer me what the, you know, dollar per dollar value I have into it. And I don't want to sell it. This is just too much of a fun truck. Anyways, guys, I'm going to set up the camera just so I can show you these rear trailing arms. All right, guys, before I get to installing these, I just wanted to kind of show everybody how nice looking these parts are. Um, these are the Losi brand uh, trailing arms. Um, they look so good. Um, the finish on them is awesome. Um, I was really, really impressed. Um, you know, obviously there's, there's a couple of companies that make these parts. Um, the one thing for me is I hate when you have like, you know, kind of like different... Um, colors of like aluminum and um, anodization and stuff like that i hate that i find that just kind of ruins a vehicle so i knew with the parts that i wanted to change on the truck um that i was going to stick to the same brand and the looks ones just look so nice what i really like hopefully you guys can see this here if i can get it to focus come on you can see that little slot where it kind of holds in the the uh bubble. it comes with a little tool and it's metal that you can use to loosen that and remove it so that if you want to take it out, you can. Which I thought was really cool when I saw that. There. So if you need to, you can move it, clean it, do anything you need to do, and there you go. So I thought that was kind of cool. I thought that was a nice little touch. You know, it's not just, um, you know, pluck it in and you're good to go type thing. But anyways, guys, I want to get these installed, so let's get going. I went ahead, guys, and removed the wheels and tires. Um, this isn't going to be like an install video in the sense, you know, watch me unscrew a bunch of screws and stuff like that. Um, I know most of you guys won't have a problem with this. Um, while I'm doing, guys, the installation, if I notice anything, um, you know, odd or just anything that I had a kind of problem with, obviously I'll show you guys that. But, uh... If not, guys, you'll see these bad boys installed in a few seconds. All right, guys, so the um, arm is out. And the only thing I wanted to show you guys was um, when you guys do remove this, um, if you're doing your parts, the front two screws, so the ones that are basically holding the actual arm, and this one is where the sway bar goes, those were just a little bit shorter. Uh, besides from that, the other three 
boom, boom, and sorry, boom, boom, and boom are all the same length. Uh, you got your four nuts. Um, one thing I noticed that I thought was kind of cool is that when I was removing, I think this screw, this is the one that had the shock on it. Um, you could actually see how this was like screwed in too tight and the plastic was kind of flexing a little bit. So obviously we won't have that problem with the aluminum. All right, guys, there you have it. I got the uh, two rear trailing arms on. Um, the only thing I've got to do at this point now is kind of adjust the uh, limiting strap. Um, if none of you guys, I mean, most of you guys probably have experience with them, but if any of you guys aren't, you know, quite sure exactly what a limiting strap does, what it does is a limiting strap will limit your suspension and your shock travel. So instead of your suspension bottoming out and putting the strain, for example, on the the rod and the rod end on the shock, or even, I guess, just the pin, I don't know if you can really see, but obviously up like the piston and everything inside the shock, what it does is it'll limit so that your shock never fully, you know, opens right up type thing. So you don't get the strain, the biggest fine, you, I got kind of familiar with these on my Bajas, my HBI Bajas, because I used to have a lot of problems. So I always ran limiting straps on them. And basically I used to break either, I'd strip the rod and right out of the shock type thing. This will obviously keep that from happening so that your shock doesn't fully open. And that way you won't have the strain on those parts. So basically all you've got to do is you've got to, these are, I mean, these aren't the greatest. They're nice because they're adjustable. And I did have them set up when I first got the truck. And then as soon as I added this part on, it must have just changed everything just a little bit. There is a couple adjustments here. It changed things a little bit that it kind of decided that it, it it just needs to be a little bit more tighter. So I've just got to kind of tighten it up so that the, this thing, because right now you can kind of tell it's very, you know, it's not tight. And it should be right now with, the, with, um, with obviously with the way the truck is hanging right now, this should be what's holding the suspension. This is what should be holding this this whole rear assembly up. And I said right now it's the shock. But uh, yeah, guys, I got them both on. Um, pretty much straightforward, guys. Nothing to tell you. Um, yeah, so they're on. And we're going to move now to the front knuckles. Um, but I am going to say, guys, that they do look wicked. Um, you know, the gunmetal body was just a little bit of red. And now those parts is really going to set this truck off. I'm I'm definitely happy that I kept this beast because it's uh yeah you know what Losi just did a really really good job on this and the fact that it's an 8S truck 8S truck makes it even that much more fun. All right guys, we're on to the steering knuckles now. Uh the new knuckles do come with bearings as well. So I just thought I would take this opportunity to guys um just to kind of give you guys a little bit of advice. If you're ever trying to install bearings um and they don't fit and I I'm, I'm not saying that's the case right now with these but you just can't get them, you know, pressed in, throw them in the freezer. Uh, metal shrinks a teeny, tiny, 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 tiny bit when it gets cold. Uh, the same way as heat will, or um, metal will also actually expand if they get warm. So a lot of times, you know, if you can't get something to fit, putting something like this, warming it up, doing your bearings, putting them in the freezer so they cool up, they cool down a bit, you'll actually be able to get them installed. And again, I'm not saying guys, that's the case here. I haven't even tried yet. Um, but I just thought I'd show you guys these parts. They're definitely nice looking. They are labeled left and right. Um, they obviously match the rear trailing arms and the brace back there perfectly. So I'm definitely kind of excited to get these on. Um, they look kind of pretty much straightforward. There'll be a screw in here. We'll back that off. That'll drop the pin. Um, there's a screw there and a screw right in there. And then you'll be able to lift the pins as you can see, the only thing that's holding that pin in right now is the screw. And then drop the, I don't know, I usually call them turnbuckles, but these don't really have any adjustment on them. But we'll drop those and we'll be able to get them in. All right, guys, there you have it. The new front knuckles are installed. They look wicked. Um, you know, when I first started looking at this vehicle, um, you know, I just, you know, you start watching videos and when you get on the groups and stuff like that, you kind of can find some of the parts that were, you know, a bit weak in the part that uh, you know people were having problem with these were one of them um, they were definitely a recommend um, I didn't break any that I had but I didn't necessarily also didn't drive it all that hard um, in the beginning uh, these went on pretty easy peasy I did transfer the uh, brakes over even though they're just for show um, I did put them on I had considered not doing it but um, if anything too I think the, the hub actually backs up onto them as well so I think if you took them off, you'd probably have to either shim or you do, you'd have to do something. But uh, I mean, and then they actually, I don't know, they look cool and they do spin. Um, so I like them. I put them back on. Um, 
nothing, no issues whatsoever putting on the fronts. Um, they just pretty much straightforward, nothing to tell you guys at all. Uh, anyways, guys, let's get the wheels and tires on. All right, guys, looks wicked. Um, tires are back on. You know, to me, this is even though you don't see a whole lot of them from you know a side from the side sort of profile, it just really you know kind of complements the truck. You know, with the Super Rock Ray being you know about a one six one six and a half ish kind of scale, um, you know those parts really you know they're they're big, they're bulk, they're beefy, so they kind of just look that much you know even better. They're not you know teeny tiny like one tenth scale parts or anything like that. Um, from the back. Again, like I said, I did this. I did this off camera one night. I just kind of came down and wanted to putter with it a little bit. But the arms, the trailing arms, look wicked. I'm really, really happy with those. Um, front knuckles are on as well. Obviously, you can't see those as well um, because they're obviously kind of sort of tucked in there. But they're there, and they look cool. And like I said, the guys, they're going to add strength. That's the one thing. Like I was mentioning a couple minutes ago, it is. Uh, you know one of the the weak points of the truck but uh yeah i'm pretty happy um you know i like i said guys i was considering getting rid of this truck and uh you know it's it's funny you see so many um other trucks all the time and you don't see these at all and you know to me people should be owning them um and I say that not from the thing like, oh, just, you know, spring up a thousand bucks or whatever and buy one. I'm talking to the guys that are buying the thousand dollar trucks and then dumping thousands and thousands and thousands into them. Um, you know, if you're one of those guys and you're, you know, you've been kind of looking at this truck and kind of, eh, do I want to get one? You know what? I did the same thing. Um, I was very, you know, kind of like, you know, my driving style is just bashing, you know, a lot of speed, ripping over hills. Um, that's mainly what I do. So I, I knew what a solid actual truck was going to be like. It's not like, you know, I knew I was buying an eight scale, um, you know, how do I explain this the best? When I bought my Yeti XL, I assumed I, in my head, I was just thinking, Hey, I'm buying a, this big, cool truck. That's got a solid axle and it's got cool, you know, trailing arms. And it's going to be super fun because it's going to look awesome. And then I drove it and I was like, Holy crap, this isn't a whole lot of fun. Because I was expecting to have an Erevo HBI Savage style truck. Now, I know that might sound, you know, kind of ridiculous. Hey, Jason, it's a solid axle truck, blah, blah, blah. But you know what? It's a few years back, quite a bit now. Um, you know, I didn't realize the differences that it was going to be. Now that I have other trucks um, and I've been driving other trucks and obviously I've been driving now for a while. It's, you know, this thing is just fun. It's just, it's a different experience to drive. Um... And, you know, every time I take it out, I enjoy it. It's fun. I haven't had it out a ton. Um, only just because, I mean, hey, life, busy, whatever. Uh, or I'm taking out other trucks. But I'm definitely glad, guys, that I have this. Um, and again, if you're in the market, you know, and you guys are looking for something else. You know, if you have, you know, if you have those um, quintessential bashers. And what I mean is, if you've got the Arma Creighton, you have, or the Arma Outcast or you have a Reaper, or you have an X-Max, um, you have some version of an LST. If you have those trucks already, you have a Wicked Basher. Step out, buy something a little different. Um, you know, a few people have asked me, you know, what would you recommend, you know, the Super Rock Ray or the UDR? Um, and yeah, it's the Super Rock Ray all the way, not even uh, close, it's not even... Uh, just because both trucks are solid axle, they're not even, in my mind, um, and it's not meant to piss anybody off who has a UDR, they're just not even close. To me, this is so much more fun to drive. Um, you know, it's a little bit bigger, and it just looks deadly, and it's just, I don't know, again, guys, I find it more fun. Um, anyways, guys, I'm going to take it outside now just for a couple of picks, and uh, the only thing, guys, I do have left for it that I haven't installed yet way over here is the that's the fifth scale servo mount i don't have a servo for it yet um i do need to get one though the servo is a little weak it works it works but it's uh yeah it's you know i definitely think you know a quicker uh quicker torque your servo something that holds the tires better uh, would definitely be a lot more fun but anyways guys thanks for watching and here's a few picks